to Confessions from a Pastor's Wife. Thank you for joining me. If you like the content of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also get this podcast on Apple and Spotify platforms or wherever else you get your podcasts. Well, thank you so much for joining me yet again. Um, I'm going to be really transparent with you guys. I came to the revelation today that I have been under a spiritual attack for a while. Um, Satan has kind of tried to make me forget who I am. Um, and I'll go through that with you, uh, a little bit deeper and, you know, it just, it came back to me today, this whole revelation of why I'm here, what my purpose is and, um, getting me back to my true authentic self, you know, cause I feel like I was kind of lulled to sleep there for a little bit you know I just like felt like I was kind of fumbling around and not really functioning at my best you know and then there's some health problems going on and you know we're getting to the bottom of that but um, I just wanted to share this with you because I think that may maybe there's a few people going through the same thing so um, for those who know me outside of you know this podcast you guys all know that I'm as a child, I was very, as a, as a kid, I was very athletic. You know, I, w- I was into basketball, um, soccer, volleyball, any sport that a, they would let a girl play, I would play it. Um, I was always the kid with the basketball walking around town. And, um, you know, into my 20s, 30s, I was pregnant for the majority of my 20s. But, you know, after I was done having kids, I found the love of the gym and bodybuilding and you know, so so working out and being active has always been a passion of mine. I really love going to the gym and I just love challenging myself and how good it feels afterwards. But I'm going to share with you, I haven't been there and doing the work, I think now for over a year. I've been going to the gym like off and on. I definitely haven't been consistent with it, but um. For the past year, I would say that I I wasn't doing the work that I should have been doing. You know, I found working out to be boring or a chore and it just wasn't like me. And then I also found, this is where God gave me the realization today. I found that I started suffering from the mom guilt, Um, the guilt from being away from my kids. Uh, You know, as they get older, they're my middle son is in high school right now and I want to be there for him through all his sports and all the things you know he needs the rides here and there you know and um, I want to be home you know just so that if they want to talk to me I'm here instead of being at the gym I don't want to miss an opportunity with them and I think that comes from when I was bodybuilding they were young and I spent a lot of time away from them Um, because that's what bodybuilding is, you know, it is a very selfish, sacrificing sport. It is not for, you know, the faint of heart in any capacity and and you got to be strong about it, you know, um, within your mind, you have to have a strong mind for it. But I found all of a sudden I, I was struggling with this guilt. I'm like, why all of a sudden, you know, my kids can take care of themselves now. Uh, why all of a sudden am I feeling this guilt? And so that made me not want to go to the gym. Well, not going to the gym was starting to manifest itself in frustration, in lethargy, not feeling like myself, trying to figure out, you know, why am I feeling this way? And it was almost like I was in a fog. It was almost like I had the blinders on. Um, And God gave me the realization today and I have been going back to the gym you know um, my stepdaughter she's very into the gym as well and she's pregnant and she asked me to work out with her so it kind of catapulted me back into this routine of going to the gym and now I'm back going like every day and wanting to go every single day and um, the realization that I got was Satan was trying to make me forget myself he was trying to make me forget what I love to do, what is my passion. Um, And so simple, it is going to the gym. It is feeling really good. It is um, being healthy, eating healthy, making healthy choices. And that, that stems over into doing this podcast. You know, 
This is another passion, a newfound passion of mine. Um, it does make me feel a little bit insecure. So he is, the, the enemy is really attacking my insecurity, um, the guilt of being away from my kids uh, when I, when I was, uh, training a lot and, um, you know, it really brought me to kind of like this place where, like I said, I didn't remember who I was and that's his whole game. He, he wants you to forget your purpose. He wants you to forget about the passion that God has placed in your heart, about the calling God has placed on you. He doesn't want you to fulfill your purpose. He wants you kind of meandering around in the dark grasping at stuff that he puts in your way and and takes you down this dark path and before you know it like (laughs) you know you don't know what's happened and uh I just I I want to share with you that it's good for your kids to see you live out your passion because then that gives them encouragement to whatever they're passionate about passionate about they can go ahead and do it you know my middle son he's athletic as I am and you know he's starting to log his food as I used to do which now I'm finding is it can be a little bit annoying I didn't really find it annoying when I was doing it but now he's like oh how much is in this and how many tablespoons is that and it just reminds me of when I was bodybuilding and and I'm sure I annoyed the people that I was living with at the time but um you know it's really for me it's really great to see him passionate about it and I think that him watching me all those years you know because they do see they they understand why you're not there he knew what I was doing and uh it, it's giving him the um confidence to move forward and 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 be this way you know and have a passion and, and care about what he's putting into an into his body and and building his body the way he wants for the sport that he wants to do you know like he's an aspiring football athlete and I think that that's great um and it comes from for I think that it comes from um him watching me and as well as his father like we're both very athletic people and um I just want to encourage you that if you feel like God has placed a calling or a passion on your heart, go ahead and do it. Kids or not, um, definitely make the time to do it. Sit down and and carve it out. I found it very helpful in the beginning. I would schedule my gym time like an appointment and I don't like being late for appointments. I don't like the feeling of missing an appointment. So that's one of the tricks that I used. Um, and you can use that with you know, if you want to read your Bible, if you want to um, get a closer connection with God, schedule it in. Um, you know, Wednesday nights, my husband does Bible study. If in your area you you have um, a local pastor doing Bible study, I do recommend going to one. Um, I think it's it's really amazing, especially if they have a discussion afterwards. Hearing everyone's different perspective on a on a Bible story, a passage, a verse. It really can um, change how you looked at that verse. And I think that that's great. You know, that's iron sharpening iron. And uh, so whatever it is that God has placed on your heart, don't let the enemy scare you away from it Um, because that's what he's going to do. He wants you to forget your purpose and he wants you, um, like I said, to be fumbling around in the dark. Um, so I really hope that you are encouraged by it. Oh, I also wanted to share with you something really quick that I found that was really, that really led to the, uh, revelation God gave me today. And it says, your calling is going to crush you. If you're called to mend the brokenhearted, you're going to wrestle with brokenheartedness. If you're called to prophesy, you're going to struggle to control your mouth. If you're called to lay hands you will battle spiritual viruses. If you are called to preach and to teach the gospel, you will be sifted for the wisdom that anoints your message. If you are called to empower, your self-esteem will be attacked. Your successes will be hard fought. Your calling will come with cups, thorns, and sifting that are necessary for your mantle to be authentic, humble, and powerful. Your crushing won't be easy because your assignment is not easy. Your oil is not cheap. That to me was so insp- 
inspiring and and really that line that says if you are called to empower your self-esteem will be attacked you know that's I I don't necessarily call myself an influencer or anything like that but I mean I guess that's kind of what I am and anyone that looks at my Instagram thinks that I'm an in, influencer and, and that's fine but that it does say that your self-esteem will be attacked you know and that and that's something that um i think that more people need to pray to god for protection over satan's attacks and recognizing that this is a spiritual warfare that is happening um and it's ramping up because the time is coming and satan knows that and he's kicked it into overdrive i just see it all throughout the world and there's more than one person experiencing this whether they know it or not you know i hear stories from friends of mine who aren't christians and and it just all to me now it just sounds like a huge spiritual attack and so i pray for them i pray protection for them and you know it's so funny i'm so quick to pray for other people that i forget to pray for myself and uh you know, I went and, and I had coffee with a good Christian friend of mine and she prayed over me and the things that she said, I don't even think at the time I didn't even really recognize I needed that prayer. But in part of it, she said, you know, let let her self-esteem, you know, what she has to say, make sure that she knows that um, there is worth behind it. And, and that is something that I needed, you know, and I didn't realize it. So again, if you're struggling with something, if if God has put something in your heart, go ahead and do it. Um, and if you have kids and you're suffering from the mom guilt, it's okay. It's okay to let them see you work. It's okay to let them see you do something that sets your soul on fire, whether it be working out or painting or um, I don't know, whatever it is. Let them see you do it because that's going to set a good example for them. Don't let them see you get shaken by it and and quit. You don't want to you don't want to model that for them where you just it gets too hard and you quit. Really push through, and I'm gonna try and push through with this podcast as well, and and get back into a regular scheduled um, um, timing for it. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much for the support and um, the viewership. It's it's really great. I do take a look at the analytics every now and again, and it's just it's amazing to me how many people listen. And I just really appreciate you guys. And um, I've got a lot to say. I do have a few recorded, but again, I just get so wrapped up in myself. I think I just I listen to it back, <laughs> and I don't think that I should. It's like an actor who won't watch their own movies, you know, because they just pick it apart. Oh, I should have said this. I should have acted that way or I could have done this better. You know, I listen back and I'm like, oh, I missed this point. I should have said that. And, you know, this whole podcast is supposed to be about transparency and authenticity and me just having a conversation with you guys like I would face to face with a friend. So that's what it is. So I hope that you're encouraged by this. If you need, um, if you feel like someone in your life would benefit from this encouragement, don't hesitate to share it. And uh, I will see you next time uh, here on Confessions from a Pastor's Wife. Mm-hmm.